Hi VR friends, this is Tatiana from Disco VR and today I want to share with you some of the news from ViveCon 2021 in which they announced their two new headsets, Vive Focus 3, a standalone headset and Vive Pro 2, a wired PC VR headset. In this video I will talk about Vive Focus 3 and Vive Pro 2 will be featured in the next video. I don't know about you, but as a proud Quest 2 owner, I really appreciate untethered gaming experience and I was looking forward to hearing more about their wired wireless Vive Focus 3 headset. However, the ViveCon revealed its strong business enterprise orientation, so I guess we are not receiving the Oculus Quest 2 competitor after all. Still, I have a feeling that there will be enthusiasts out there who would love to explore the powerful VR set anyway, because it has some major improvements compared to some other standalone VR sets. So I thought I would tell you all about it and compare it to Oculus Quest 2 and its newly announced competitor from China, Pico Neo 3. First things first, Vive Focus 3 has a magnificent 5K resolution, which is 2.5K per eye, and it is superior to Oculus Quest 2 that features a little less than a 4K display, and much better than Pico Neo's single display, which is also a little less than 4K. So we can expect some significant improvements to the visual display and the quality of an image. It will also include a 90Hz refresh rate right off the bat, something that took Oculus Quest 2 a short while to get to. However, Quest 2 already increased it to 1 120 Hz on selected tiles, and both Vive Focus 3 and Pico Neo 3 so far still seem to be stuck at 90 Hz, but something tells me that it won't be long until they catch up. Another very impressive improvement is the field of view, or FOV, basically how much of the VR image you can actually see. Individually, a human eye has a horizontal FOV of about 135 degrees, and the range of the total visual field in humans is around 150 degrees. Knowing that, did you know that Oculus Quest 2 has the FOV of only 90 degrees, so there are roughly 30 degrees on each side that you cannot see, and we still enjoy this VR set very much. The FOV on the new Vive Focus 3 is reaching the whopping 120 degrees, which is incredible and getting crazy similar to the human FOV. I won't be surprised if we reach 150 degrees in less than 3 years. To compare, Pico Neo 3 has a horizontal FOV of 101 degrees, which is quite better than Quest, but not nearly as good as Vive Focus 3. Finally, probably my favorite feature of this VR headset is the removable battery on the back, which not only serves as the great counterbalance, but also helps you to swap it with a different battery and continue your work with a minimum interruption. The fact that the battery on Oculus Quest 2 is not replaceable is heartbreaking to me, so much that I even made a video describing the best practices to preserve your battery's life, because that's all you've got. But with the battery on Focus 3, it looks like it's not going to be a big problem anymore. And also, of course, the Quest 2 battery is located on the front, which means that all the weight is not evenly distributed like in Focus 3 and Pico Neo 3, and the battery in the back makes all the difference in terms of the comfort. Speaking of the weight of the headset, Vive Focus 3 is made of magnesium alloy, which is 20% lighter and 500% more durable and resilient than plastic. This is very reassuring. If we spend this much money, we want to be sure that our VR headset will last. Something that also relates to comfort is the interpopular distance adjustments on the lenses. Many headsets seem to be stuck in the limited three settings of adjustment, and that's not ideal because we as humans don't necessarily fall perfectly within one of those three categories. So Vive Focus 3 finally adapts to this consumer's need by introducing highly adjustable IPDs with a smooth range between 57 and 72 millimeters. So it's going to be much easier for you to find that sweet spot with a dial that reminds me of the dial in the binoculars rather than on the VR side set, and it should work much better. To be honest, I really like the sleek and modern overall design of this headset, with the exception of the back that looks very bulky, but of course it is to be expected considering that there is a battery stuff there, so right now there's probably the best that we can get. But then again, I really like this front ski mask looking design, I think that they really went on and created something unique and standing out instead of copying their own design or the design of other headsets. The controllers on the other hand, look like a one-to-one -one copy of the controllers from Quest 2, just with a longer grip and uh, what it looks like a slightly larger ring. No surprises here, I do find the design of those controllers extremely comfortable. 
Another functionality that we'll be including in the future is hand tracking. Currently, Viofocus 3 does not support hand tracking, while both Quest 2 and Pico Neo 3 do. Focus 3 is lagging in this area a bit as of now, but I guess we will have to wait and see how much they will catch up. While Viofocus 3 is a standalone VR, it doesn't seem to have its own games, which is understandable because of its very strong business enterprise orientation. To compare, both Oculus Quest 2 and Pico Neo 3 have their own VR game stores, so you don't need to have a PC to play some games. Viofocus 3 has a way to connect to Steam VR via cable, however, that tethered connection kind of negates all the benefits of having a standalone VR headset. And fortunately, the HTC did confirm that they are uh, planning to release wireless streaming via Wi-Fi, which will be added later on. But of course, all your dreams of playing with this VR set will probably get completely shattered when I tell you that the price for Viofocus 3 is $1,300. Well, let me tell you, I'm sure that even even with all the improvements in terms of the quality and the design, you're still thinking, how is it possible that it is so much more expensive than Oculus Quest 2, which starts at only $300? Well, let me remind you once again that it is an enterprise version and those always go for a higher price than the consumer versions because of all the business and enterprise support that comes in the package. Businesses will use this VR headset for marketing, digital visualization, training, simulations, education, therapy, and rehabilitation, and it also will come with vibe sync which is a business collaborative space. Also remember that Quest 2 comes for cheap because you pay for it with your data, while in Focus 3 no Facebook sign-ins are required and the company will have neither control over nor access to your data and security matters, and also comes with a price. However, it's worth mentioning that Quest 2 also has its enterprise version, which is no different from the consumer version in any functional way other than it is disconnected from Facebook login requirement and that places the $799 price tag on this headset. And it is still the whole $500 cheaper than the Vive Focus 3. So basically, all the improvements that we can see in Vive Focus 3 compared to Quest 2 Enterprise version are worth about $500, minus the ability to play standalone VR games like in the Oculus Store. Is it really worth the $500? Here's the table to show you the specs of these headsets side by side, and honestly, I'm not sure I'm seeing it. Even if we include the Pico Neo Enterprise version, the one that comes with eye tracking, it is still less expensive than Vive Focus 3. And those are the prices for the Chinese version of the headset, and the versions for the West are very likely to be much lower. So there you have it. Vive Focus 3 is a beautiful standalone headset with many specs exceeding similar wireless headsets, but the huge difference in the price still doesn't quite match what they're offering, even if we consider that it is an enterprise-oriented model. Perhaps after they add hand tracking, wireless connection to the PC, and eye tracking, it will become a little bit closer to what businesses and maybe even regular consumers will buy. Let me know in the comments what you think about this new VR set and do you think you may want to buy it in the future and what will it take you to want to buy this VR headset? Don't forget to subscribe to Disco VR for more VR news, gameplays, reviews and other exciting VR content. I greatly appreciate your support. And stay on the lookout to the new video about Vive Pro 2 which I will link in the corner as soon as it is out. That's it for today, my VR friends. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and as always, happy gaming!